Hello, everyone, and welcome to our third day, third and final day of Connecting Online for 2020. Yes, time does fly, and it's been 11 years, and here we are on our third day. So I'm going to introduce our presenters. Before I do, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us and um, suggest that you invite your friends being online, physically online, and not um, watching passively on Facebook makes a difference because um, there are a lot of things that happen in the chat box, so uh, you don't want to miss it. So come join us. Don't be shy. So uh, our two presenters have been working together for a while, even though I believe they live in different places, but they did uh, both uh, work at a university in Ghent, uh, University of Technology. Uh, Eva is currently doing her PhD. She has a master's in mechanical medical engineering, an inter-academic field of study uh, run by, cooperatively by Ghent University of Technology and the Medical University of Ghent, Poland. She started her adventure with e-learning in May of 2015. She volunteered in what's called Erasmus uh, Projects. That's a European um, project. There are a few of them. And uh, she took part in Moodle MOOCs. And I had the pleasure of having Ava as, um, as a participant. And I learned a lot from Ava as well as from Anna. She's currently working on her PhD, as I said. And the topic of her um, dissertation, I believe, uh, will be material engineering and medical devices uh, and designing the use of computer collaboration. And I think that's one of the key things here, collaboration tools. Uh, by multidisciplinary specialists. Uh, so it's a practical, very, very practical collaboration. Anna was awarded her PhD from Gantz University of Technology. She has a master's in science um, and in applied informatics from uh, De Montfort University in uh, the UK. Uh, she's retired, but she is definitely not retired. I don't know what retired means, Anna, but Anna does a lot of volunteer a lot of work, um, but she's, she's been retired for um, 12 years now. Uh, she's an e-learning specialist in the ProMed and a head of the Autodesk Training Center at Gans University of Technology, so that doesn't sound like you are retired. And she's <laughs> advisor for U3A Online in Australia, founder member of the Association of Academic E-Learning, a fellow and she's also a fellow at uh, 2009 of Eden. Okay, so that's called retired. Okay, so we, <laughs> we understand what that means, Anna. So it gives me great pleasure again to introduce our two speakers, and we're looking forward to your session. So go for it, Ava. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Nelly. Thank you for the wonderful introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here. And our presentation today is about city games uh, inter in intergenerational computer skills training. And let me start with uh, quite a sad message because research shows that 45% uh, of Europeans are digitally illiterate or excluded. And most of them are seniors over 60 years old. That means they're somehow out of this uh, social part of life, which is now moved online. They're out of uh, even formal things that we now conduct online. And that's really sad that that was the base uh, to some European projects supporting those elderly people, supporting their inclusion into the digital world. And I would like to mention three main Erasmus Plus projects that uh, we participate in right now. It's Erasmus Plus Strategic Partnership for Older People Inclusion into Digital World. It's Seniors at ITC and it's a Strategic Partnership for Digitally Excluded. Uh, we ask our partners um, about their concerns, their ideas, and there are two main questions that we ask each other. Why digital integration of older people into society? And what's the danger of the digital divide? 
So um, let me just uh, show you some of the uh, so some of the problems that we discussed. And uh, quoting our participants, we came to a conclusion that without increasing knowledge and enabling equal access to the internet, we are not able to close a digital divide. And uh, our partners from Slovenian Third Age University actually um, made some great points saying that educators of uh, older adults have to incorporate, incorporate digital tools and tasks that are stimulating primary motivation of older learners. In older adult education, learners have smartphones, but are they systematically used in teaching languages or other topics? Sometimes they just have the smartphones and they use it just like they use the regular phones before. They don't know their function. They know, they see teenagers playing on their smartphones all the time and they have their own and they have no idea how to use it, how many functions they actually have and how useful they can be for them. So the next point was, if teachers do not include digital life tasks in their learning programmers, how can we expect older learners to progress in the digital learning? One thing can be expected for sure, the digital divide between generation is going to grow as the technology implementation is growing. Keeps growing every week, every month with new, new technologies have been developed. So the digital exclusion, exclusion will continue increasing and for that matter, social inequality and we do not want this. And there is one more. In a world where technology is used to connect people, it's necessary to ensure their access to technology and the skills required to take advantage of it. So digital inclusion is another shape that social inclusion takes. And nowadays technology is more than just a tool to use for work. It uh, permeates all aspects of life and thus ensuring that everyone has the skill to take advantage of it. It's absolutely necessity. So we have two ways to do that. And we usually start with something that I call uh, software-based learning. So we have someone that wants to learn how to use the computer mm -hmm. and say, well, okay, so first thing to do, you need an email account. You need to learn how to use internet browsers uh then we can move on you can uh, learn some word powerpoint excel then you're getting advanced you can do online banking and so on and so on but don't you think it's actually overwhelming and for some it might be like speaking in a different language or using some codes they don't understand because okay email account but hey we have regular post email we can send a regular email internet browser what is it and it's like it comes naturally for those who use it but it needs a lot of patience and explanations for those who just start there and uh, because some never paid attention to the technology to the development and now they see they need it and they feel confused they don't know where to start and what to do first uh, that's why we've started something that's called uh, Meetings with Computers for Seniors. It's at Gdańsk University of Technology. Uh, it's been conducted for years. And uh, with the use of uh, Moodle platform, of course, because we are fans of Moodle. And uh, the first platform uh, was developed in 2004 for the 2003, Eva. 2003. <laughs> Why did you not tell me that before? <laughs> yes, but before it was located at university server, and okay. uh, we started from adaptation of models so translation of interface. Oh yes, that's true. Uh, so what was the first platform was Planka that model, and it was also to connect people. It was. Uh, Anna told me the story about her colleagues from high school, from the university, that she got them together, uh, prepared a model room for them, just to socialize, to uh, socialize, to organize events, and then through that to 
learned technology and um, and work on the digital inclusion for her own colleagues. That was the first uh, one. Then move on, took part in different projects and uh, from 2009, uh, they've been using uh, different. There it was the third year, third age university, Muru platform, uh, collaborating with some other institutions, with British Council, with uh, some e-senior uh, institutions. And that was actually the first time uh, that they started working on city games as a part of uh, uh, active citizenship, uh, collaboration and uh, education and social activities. And here's our new Moodle platform we've been using in since 2014 and uh, you have the information about our regular meetings you have the information about the project we participate in uh, we add uh, all the new projects here that um, that we get involved in uh, but let's go back to city games uh, for me city game is a task-based learning so we have a task to do. We have to decide where to organize a city game. So we have to learn Google. We have to Google a place, Google what's uh, there. What can we see? What can we show? To. Maybe we have some places we used to visit, but we don't remember anymore. We don't know how the city changed during the years. We can Google that, or we can Google a whole different place like, uh, uh, next uh, city nearby or even something far far away and to plan that we use Moodle forum to communicate to uh, to come up with, an, with ideas what to do where to go uh, then next step is doing it a train we need a flight uh, then we go through booking then we have to go through paying apps and we actually had one a whole class, I think it was even more than one, that were booking flights for our seniors. And we taught them how to use the booking app, how to attach your credit card, and how to actually be careful with it and watch the banking. Keep in mind that uh, you have to be careful doing any transactions online. Same with hotel. If you need to stay overnight, you need to learn how to use booking apps. You can do it on your phone, you can do it on your computer. And then to develop some tasks to perform, to design the whole game, we use simple tools. We use Word, we use PowerPoint. So we don't need complicated apps. We need something we can use for on our phones or on our computers. We don't need complicated software. And how to get there, we simply use Google Maps and prepare our road and then we can share our results. We can write something in, in Word, our reflections, uh, or we can use PowerPoint, the presentation, or just show pictures in social media and show, hey, that's us, that's a whole group. We've just uh, been to here and there and discovered all new things. Or we've just walked around our own town and discovered how many things have changed during the years. Because uh, it's great because uh, city game, it's a brain exercise, it's a muscle exercise, and it's fun. Uh, the project Active Citizens, 60, 70, 80 plus, supports uh, active citizenship for people and also educational and such social activities that promote Poland, uh, its culture and history. And there are two levels of the activities. The first one is involves uh, the inclusion of seniors in the process of creating games. That's the brain exercise. Uh, create the games in the urban space, which is uh, close to us and develop uh, playing cards. It can be paper, it can be electronic form, whatever they like. And the second level is to actually participate in the game they developed. 
they can develop different versions and then exchange and solve uh, other people's puzzles during the game. Um, uh, we actually like to create teams and uh, well, within the teams of several players, uh, they move around, they play in the urban space uh, in order to perform the task, uh, set up the distractions as good as possible, of course, and uh, using the map, uh, participants search for a place or an object, uh, answer the questions about it, and uh, take pictures of the spot they found, which they later share in the presentations or they share it on social media. Uh, another thing is, uh, we noticed that our seniors have difficulties in organizing guided tours abroad. Uh, it was mostly because of the lack of funds and poor knowledge of English, but not only by our seniors, but sometimes also from uh, guides from abroad. The different accents, different pronunciation, sometimes it was really hard to understand. And sometimes visiting the city uh, with a guide uh, could be just a waste of time and money. And the team planning actually turned out to be a much better solution. And so after they went through um, creating games for their own city, creating games about guys uh, and the nearby places, uh, they got inspired by, by two famous uh, Gdansk citizens. Uh, one was Philip Kluber, who lived uh, from uh, uh, 1580 to 1622. He was a famous geographer uh, looking for the parts of Europe from the geological point of view. And the second was uh, Tomasz Bedinski, uh, who was our guest and uh, prepared a wonderful presentation about Philip Kluver. And he actually inspired us uh, to, to look further, to go further. And so uh, we've planned a trip to Georgia because uh, according to Philip Kluver's research, uh, the end of Europe from, is going to Georgia and uh, he was writing about Georgia and uh, Tomasz Bedeński was actually uh, um, talking about it too. Then we had a meeting with two uh, young boys who actually traveled to Georgia and shared the experience with us. So we got all excited about it. And during the school year from 2016, 2017, we're working on our trip to Georgia. Uh, it was the good old days where, when we still had Viki as a Moodle plugin. So most planning was done in Viki. And they collaborated on that. They prepared a whole plan, a whole big schedule for each day, including where to go, including uh, all the times and also kilometers. And you can notice that here we have the dates of the planning. Here we have what we're going to see and then how many kilometers it would take and how many kilometers in total. Of course, they were not walking for two hundred. 130 kilometers, they had to take a bus or a train or rent a car, but everything was planned with details. So they felt safe before they uh, set off. And after the whole planning, they also prepared a city game for themselves. Uh, this one is, as an example, is the city game about uh, Tbilisi in Georgia. And it includes uh, simple questions, simple hints, uh, some interesting news they found on the internet, and pictures. And part of the task was uh, to find a place, to find some information there, and take a picture of them uh, visiting the place. Actually, this project inspired other uh, people to cause uh, just a few days ago, we got a message from our project partner from Portugal that uh, they decided to implement, implement city games uh, there too. Uh, 
they prepared some regals uh, in Portugal. They got in touch with the university there and uh, they prepared a, a city game about uh, returning to the roots of uh, of paper city games, but they also used online version. And uh, as we can see, they, even though they had uh, troubles and poor weather conditions, it was raining, people still showed up and prepared a city game and played and prepared a wonderful presentation showing the result of the games. As you can see, they were um, visiting a forest with uh, animals there and uh, a park um, of a famous uh, Portugal po uh, poet too. So I've never been there, but now I know there is something interesting to do. So if I ever have a chance, uh, I'm willing to participate in something like that too. And now I know about an interesting place to go and visit. So we also prepared city games uh, in Gdańsk for our guests about the places we like best, about the uh, famous monuments, famous old buildings, uh, with a bit, little bit of history of the places. Um, we prepared it in English because our guests was, were uh, from, I think mostly from Scotland. They, are, they were from Scotland. Mm -hmm. They were from Scotland, yes. So we translated everything to English. And um, after that, we shared uh, pictures they took uh, during the city games in a, uh, in a Google Doc. We set a Google document online so we could collect all the pictures. And then uh, they learned a new tool to share. And then we could use it later to present our games uh, to the project partners. Uh, during that, we discovered uh, a different tool for sharing too. It's mostly for the mobile devices. Uh, it's called Stellar. Uh, it's great because uh, you just create a story. Mm -hmm. You use your pictures, you put it in the app, and um, they turn around like a book pages. So you can see the pictures, you can see short comments, you can uh, insert some links there. Mm. And it's great because it's simple and it's fast. Uh, so, like here, we prepared uh, mm, like a picture relation from our city games. Uh, that Anna did that. It was maybe five minutes to just uh, upload the pictures, add some comments, and share it online. You can share the link. You can show it to your friends. And of course. Uh, the social part of it is you join different groups. We're part of the Learn with Grandma International groups. And we have also created our own, which is Learn with Grandma Gdańsk. And uh, thanks to Anna, we're always up to date with everything because uh, she takes care of everything. She even tries to translate uh, things for us. So we're always up to date. I don't know how she does it, but it's amazing. <laughs> Well, this is just, you know, if you are doing what you like, you can do it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so, oh, if I wanted to quote our friend, the famous presenter, I would say, but wait, there is more. And we also took part of EFL mm -hmm. Talks for the EFL Talks International Women's Day. And even though you cannot find us within the presenters, we prepared something else because thanks to Rob Howard and uh, his uh, uh, engagement in this event, in the celebrating Women's Day, he found a wonderful poem uh, written by Sher Rush, uh, who's also a wonderful, inspiring woman. And uh, he got her permission to use the poem. So, here is my little surprise. Uh, it was a part of UFO Talks, so maybe you could see it before, but I just want to show it again. Let me know if you can hear it. Mm -hmm. 
woman in business is like no other, multi brilliant at work and a great mother. Guided by reason to make a difference in this world, the fourteen of service with her, her over the car. Ready to go whenever the need. She knows in her heart there is a calling to heal, to do right, to speak up, determined to succeed. Her own mother that plants the possibility to see. Knows who is right, right down to the core. Her essence, her passion, shine for the more. She's in charge with a handle on it all, at the office, at the home, or at the mall, even in the depth of of all who she may know, realizes there is still plenty room to grow. So energetic, creative, and fun. All the rise, there is much to be done. She still finds time to love and to play. Sacred time to kneel and to pray. It comes from inside Get on board. She is on a great mission. Her daily prayer resides in God's grace. Serving others from afar sets the pace, making use of her talent, wisdom, and strength. She is strong and trust in divine gentle, compassionate, loving, and strong. In this sister hall of success, you want to better. Many things she puts her heart, heart to she can do. She is not alone. She stands as you can do. The role to get here has been quite a ride. Call me woman, it's my source of pride. She come along and uh, she's blazing the trail. A woman in the business whom we all have. So, as you can see, they were shy at the beginning. They were struggling sometimes with the English, but they did it and were so proud of them. And actually, uh, Cheryl was amazed too. She liked it uh, when it was shown to, uh, during EFR talks. And actually, after a little bit of struggling, they liked it enough. They liked the camera. They got comfortable with the camera that uh, we actually convinced them to prepare another video uh, promoting the whole idea of city games, the whole idea of uh, meetings with computers for seniors. And uh, together we prepared a whole new city game for the city of Augsburg, where we had uh, another project meeting with our partners. Uh, so we could promote them and it was actually the part of the project to show the activities we conduct with our uh, with our learners. And uh, I also particip participated in one of the games in Augsburg. I was there. Uh, we took some locals with us because uh, uh, the project coordinators um, live in there. So they showed us um, places we wouldn't even think of because we didn't find anything about it on the internet. And like here is the example of uh, the baker from Augsburg. They told us the whole story. You could find it in German there. Uh, it was during the occupation. Uh, they, were, um, they were almost running out of food. So he collected all the flour from the whole city, made one bread and show it to the enemies saying we have enough food to uh, to survive for for years and you're no threat to us uh, it's a sad story because he got shot after that uh, he lost his arm that's why the monument has only one arm but it's a great story they 
um, survive thanks to that, thanks to this action. And it was in a place that was far, actually far away from the tourist area. It was a small city. And if uh, had it hadn't been for them, we would have never found the place and hear the story. Uh, so that's uh, why Anna prepared another stellar uh, sharing the information about uh, the baker. And we also went to the um, Puppets Museum. We prepared another um, game about the Puppets Museum, how to find it uh, and what we can find there. So uh, because we showed the video on, about the project, we made our project partners uh, participate in the city games. We, of course, we asked for feedback and uh, we got some um, compliments. They said the event was well organized. They liked the city games, they liked the collaboration, and they thought it was a good balance between the theory and the practice. So they mostly found the training good. And also they gave us some recommendations for improvement. Some wanted more discipline, some wanted more flexibility. We didn't have enough time to take the best out of it. So it would be nice to have uh, more time next time uh, to play in the larger area. So that's what we're going to do next time. But still the average value of our training was 4.7 out of five, which we think is uh, great. And we're going to improve. We're going to uh, make the city games in Polish and English and make them available in electronic form on the Tri-City Academic Computer Network. We also want the information about games uh, to be available in dedicated groups on Facebook and uh, transfer to local organization hotels in a printed form so they can use it, they can share it with tourists. And I couldn't resist, I have to share the video. So bear, bear with me for a few more minutes. I just have to. <laughs> Strategiczny na rzecz włączenia osób starszych w świat cyfrowy. Że gry miejskie zaczęliśmy w 2012 roku. Zaczęło się wszystko od Ueta 2012, gdzie po raz pierwszy zobaczyłam taką grę w formie papierowej, wydrukowaną i było to trochę o naszej historii PRL-u. Także taką grę mam do dzisiaj, przechowuję w dokumentach jego cenny zabytek. Pierwszą grą pracowaną u seniorów tu przez nas na zajęciach była gra dla partnerów projektu Learning Later Life. Zasada jest jednakowa, czyli taka, że szukamy miejsc, miejsc zaznaczonych na mapie yy, i opisanych w grze. To jest prosta sprawa. W tej grupie yy, od 2011 roku pierwszy raz zetknęłam się z tworzeniem gry gier miejskich. Bardzo mi się to spodobało, dlatego że to jest ciekawe. Poznaje się miasto. Bardzo mi się podobało tworzenie gry miejskiej, ponieważ musiałyśmy wychodzić sobie miejsca, które chciałyśmy pokazać. Potem do tych miejsc trzeba było pójść, zobaczyć, sprawdzić, jaka odległość jest między, między poszczególnymi obiektami. Dużo oczywiście musiałyśmy o, 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 o tych obiektach poczytać sobie. Potem no, były takie spotkania integracyjne właśnie, gdzie można było przekazać wiadomości z dobyte. I oprócz tego, że te gry miejskie przybliżają nam miasto, które zwiedzamy, swoją zabawą jest tworzenie tych gier. Ja najmniej wspominam grę z tu turecką. Turecką. Dlaczego? Dlatego, że no, bardzo się starałyśmy, żeby nasi goście tutaj mieli teksty po turecku i chcieliśmy ich zaskoczyć. I oczywiście korzystaliśmy z translatora. 
Jakubik ten turecki w wykonaniu translatora zobaczyli rodowici Turcy, to się turlali po podłodze ze śmiechu. Tak by nie dotyczyć z tego tłumaczenia w tej grze miejskiej wyszło, ale zabawy było co nie miara. Z gry są dwustronne. Pierwsza rzecz kształtują osoby, które ta gra jest tworzona przez nią, a uczestnicy korzystają z kolei z tej doświadczenia tej osoby, która to ma. W związku z tym ja preferowałem w pewnym momencie, żeby te gry były bardzo aktywne. Bardzo aktywne. I dlatego robiłem tak, żeby pójść na plażę, szliśmy na od... A do punktu B. Tam się spotykaliśmy na herbatce czy na kawie. Rozmawialiśmy, wspominaliśmy. Później znowu szło się nad morze po to, żeby trochę złapać świeżego powietrza, kilka ćwiczeń oddechowych różnych, o różnych poziomach sprawności. I dalej na określone miejsca. O, ja z kolei mogę powiedzieć, że bo na temat takiego punktu ważnego dla Gdańska, jakim jest Westerda. Kiedy przyjechali do nas, to taka grupa turecka seniorów na wymianę byli bardzo zaciekawieni, gdzie ta wojna druga się rozpoczęła. To ja przygotowałam cały ten program z tych gier miejskich, tylko na Westerplatę. Wydaje mi się, że mi się udało, bo byli zapascynowani. Bardzo ciekawe doświadczenie na Westerplatę, więc bardzo mi się podoba. No, na Facebooku mamy kontakt do dzieciak, a nas minęło wiele. Gry miejskie bardzo mi się podobały, ponieważ były one dla mnie inspiracją, jeśli chodzi, wykorzystałam gry miejskie do do przygotowywania planu moich wypraw rowerowych, które od 2012 roku organizuję co roku po Polsce. Myślimy wspólnie o grze dotyczącej starej Oliwy. Oliwa jako miejsce magiczne, miejsce, w którym mieszkali, działali, funkcjonowali i do dzisiaj, czy też co niektórzy mieszkają, funkcjonują, osoby, które zasłużone są niezmiernie dla kultury Gdańska, dla życia Gdańska, dla literatury, muzyki. Niebawem chcielibyśmy w Wiedniu także skorzystać z gry miejskiej. Zobaczymy, co tam będzie ciekawego. Zapraszamy wszystkich. Należy skończyć, bo przedstawiono tyle ciekawych rzeczy, że teraz pytanie, czy jesteśmy w stanie to wszystko przeprowadzić, bo rzeczywiście jest bardzo dużo ciekawych rzeczy. Możemy sobie tylko życzyć wszystkiego najlepszego. Siły i zapału do realizacji, ale liczymy na pomoc naszej wspaniałej grupy. Wielkiej Anny. I przewodnictwem Wielkiej Anny, to chcę na pewno podkreślić. So, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Thank you, Mary, for having us again. It was a pleasure to be here as always. Thank you, Evan. Great job. <laughs> so.
yes thank you listening to your presentation and it was really good thank you yeah listen anna this this has been amazing um and it's going it it has evolved in the years that i've been following it it has really evolved and and i think that as kiki says uh kiki's from ghana you can take this um around the world um uh, and implement it i mean i think that many governments and countries and universities would be very happy to um see something like this so um i don't know if anna if you're looking for more work in your um, <laughs> retired role as someone who retired <laughs> um but this is too good to uh you know to leave uh you know uh it should become international and um mm -hmm. This is what we have been trying to do. In fact, due to this uh, European projects, uh, which are really uh, voluntary based, because we have some money for traveling, but nothing for people who are doing things. So, uh, and Eva exactly is involved in such activities together with me. So, uh, I, I'm looking forward just to implementation in more places because we've got this good practice in Portugal, in Lisbon. Um, we did something in Sofia, and uh, this year our group is going to um, Scotland, to Edinburgh. So we have been cooperating with people from University of Third Age, very close to Edinburgh. Uh, so it will work. <laughs> it it well, it, from what what I've seen, it does work. So the um, the participants are uh, retired university professors, or just anyone. Uh, w when I started, it was 13 years ago, uh, we had only um, former university teachers, um, but after years, you know, because, you know, as it is real life, so we lost uh, some of them. And now uh, we've got also people who are friends or some kind of uh, relatives to our students. So we've got, for example, mother or grandmothers of our students uh, involved in such meetings with computers. So it's also involving, but on the other hand, uh, we started uh, from the scratch. It means we had people who didn't able to use computers. Now we've got a group uh, involved in the computer usage, may I say, but um, it, it, it's not easy just to start from the scratch again, because at the very beginning, we had a bigger group of students uh, helping um, elderly to start uh, with, with computers. Nowadays, uh, Eva uh, is almost the only one <laughs> helping. So it's not a big support. And uh, yeah, and the, the main problem uh, when I'm thinking about starting uh, from the very beginning, just um, inviting new people, um, it means that I need to look for students who would be able to help us with just face-to-face um, -face meetings. Yeah, it's it's a lot for one person. Um, yes, it's, it's too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe uh, families or um, I think volunteering um, university students, I think, would be very happy to volunteer. I know they have a program in Finland um, or mm -hmm. Sweden where uh, students get um, room and board and things for volunteering a number of hours they, they they get some kind of compensation not money yeah, yeah i know what you mean so usually my husband he has got some students from medical academy and uh, mm -hmm. he, he at least try try to invite them because eva is in fact also students my husband's students <laughs> so yeah. it means uh, you know uh, it works like this but usually i think that for those especially who would like to be teachers they should start from some kind of practice teaching elderly people because the, the, it's a really very specific group it, it's it's a big challenge even for for a teacher as old as i am yes so it means that you must be really patient because elderly, they really know what they want to to learn. So, they, you know, this is really a big challenge for teachers. And I think starting from teaching elderly, it will help you with teaching students later. Yeah. Good point. So maybe go mm -hmm. to the uh, the teacher colleges mm -hmm. and and yeah. suggest this program. Anyways, um, I think that everyone got very excited. 
uh, all the attendees um, had some amazing comments uh, about it. So um, it seems to be something that would work in other places. So um, can you share the where we can, I mean, how can we help uh, on the cloud? Is there anything that we can do, anything I can do or others can do? Maybe we can connect and like, how can we contribute? Uh, I, I must say that uh, uh, if you are interested, I can prepare some kind of package with what we did because there's are uh, an example city games and also a kind of templates for mm -hmm. um, city games preparation. Uh, and also because we have been using this mobile application and uh, I have just started a project for students from our university and the students will prepare a very specific uh, mobile application in a year time. So it, it seems to be still ongoing task. Yes, it's not easy, but it's still ongoing. And also people from uh, Scotland, they send us um, a link to mobile application, which is not maybe exactly dedicated to city games, but it can be easily adopted. So it means there are very many possibilities to work at such um, city games in all places all over the world. Uh, and. Uh, Mm, I think it's possible just to pre prepare some kind of half a page of instruction mm -hmm. with uh, this pre this templates or links to mobile application uh, that they are useful. And uh, I, I must say that it's not only dedicated to elderly because I can very easily imagine that my granddaughters, they can also take part in such such a game. And uh, that's what I did with them two years ago, going to Lisbon, because I, I went there with them and we prepared a very special, my seniors prepared very special city games for, for my um, uh, three years old and five years old granddaughter. So it's also possible to, to work with the children. So, you know, there, there is no limit of age. Yes, there's just limit of willing <laughs> that you would like to do or not. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Eva and Anna, uh, for, for sharing this amazing initiative. And uh, we've got open discussion on the Moodle, so uh, everyone okay. feel free. I, to I will here. send the information in Moodle then, okay? Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Larry.